Hi there, and welcome to a project video where you'll build and deploy a modern React.js music player application. With a modern homepage with an exceptional design, where you can choose a genre and get the top songs. You can see top charts and top artists on the right side. A fully fledged Spotify-like music player that allows you to go to the previous song and next song, repeat, shuffle, fast forward, change volume, and more. I had to mute the audio due to YouTube's copyright policy, but trust me, the songs are playing. We also have a fully functional search and pages where you can explore the most popular songs in your country, trending artists, and worldwide top charts. I feel like a TV salesman for saying this, but there's more. If you click on a song title, you're navigated to a song's detail page where you can see the song's official music video and the lyrics. Isn't that crazy? Finally, you can click on the artist's name, which shows you the songs related to that artist. I almost forgot to mention that the app is entirely mobile responsive and feels just like a native mobile music player. Lyrics is the best music player and discovery app that you can currently find on the entire internet. Building this single web application with me will give you the knowledge to make any website you can imagine. Many tutorials out there teach you how to create a website with a navigation bar, a few divs, and a footer. Boring, right? Today, you'll learn how to develop a professional web application using the most in-demand technologies and deploy to the internet so that you can share it with your friends, potential employers, and put it in your portfolio. You might be wondering, what are the prerequisites for building such a fantastic website? Besides the general understanding of the JavaScript language and the basics of React, everything else that's going to be taught in this course is entirely beginner-friendly. We'll use the most in-demand technologies today, such as React, Tailwind CSS, Redux Toolkit, Shazam, and Geolocation APIs. We're going to start simple and then move to more complex concepts. I'll explain every step of the way. Alongside building this application, you'll also learn advanced React best practices, such as folder and file structure and hooks. You'll learn how to create a beautiful and modern music player and exploration UI using Tailwind CSS. You'll understand how to make all applications entirely mobile responsive on a lot of different devices. And most importantly, you'll learn how to fetch data from unlimited sources using Rapid API. Essentially, you'll become the master of working with APIs. Now for the fun part. Believe it or not, this app wasn't created by me. It was developed by a team of three students, Christian, Chris, and Salim. As the first out of three monthly projects, students are building as a part of the JSM Masterclass experience. The goal was to create a music application using React or Next.js, Shazam API, with any UI kit and library of their choice. And as you can see, they've done a wonderful job. If you want to demonstrate advanced knowledge and expertise in coding applications, showcase competency in problem solving and resolving disagreements, provide freelance clients and employers with the confidence that projects will be delivered efficiently and on schedule, display excellence and humility about learned solutions, industry trends, and future innovations, then you're in luck as that's exactly what the JSM Masterclass experience will give you. The latest cohort started just recently, so you cannot join right now. But if you're interested in joining in the future, click the JSM Masterclass link that showed up on the screen or the link in the description and enter your details. I'll personally reach out to you before we officially begin with the next cohort so you can be sure not to miss it. With that said, let's dive straight into the preparation for the current project. Before creating a folder for our project code, we must first visit Rapid API. The link is going to be down in the description. The making of this entire app is possible only due to Rapid API 
because we're using their Shazam Core API. This API is just one out of thousands of APIs available on their API hub. You'll learn how to use most of the endpoints from this API. For example, how to search for songs, artists, tracks, and top charts. Throughout the video, we'll also use the Rapid API client. So to be able to follow along, make sure to install it right now. The link is going to be down in the description. This extension will provide you with a full understanding of how APIs truly work behind the scenes. And it's going to allow us to really easily consume different APIs from within our front-end React applications. So once again, you can install it right away. And then to be able to use this API, make sure to click the Rapid API link in the description. And then if you haven't already, you can sign up or log in on top right. In this case, I'm going to log in since I already have the account. You can log in using Google, GitHub, Facebook, or just by using a regular email. Once you're in, you'll be redirected to the Rapid APIs hub. Later on, we're gonna come back here, search for our Shazam Core API, and we're gonna use it within our application. Now let's create our React application. And then later on, we're gonna call the Shazam Core API right from our React application. With that said, let's dive straight into the video. To get started with building our great application, this time we won't be creating a folder from scratch. Rather, I'm going to give you some files to make our coding journey much easier. Down in the description, you can find a Google Drive link pointing you to the Lyrics Starter code. This is a zipped file. So make sure to download it, drag and drop it to your desktop, Let's rename it to something like lyrics. You can remove the starter code and then you have to unzip it or extract it. So let's click extract all and I'm going to extract it right on the desktop. There we go. Now we can remove the zipped version and we can simply drag and drop the folder right inside of our Visual Studio code. And here we are. As you can see, we have a source folder we have a .env.example file for our environment variables, and we have a couple of other configuration files. Primarily, we have our Tailwind config file where we have some predefined styles, and also we'll be using Vite. It's a faster Create React app alternative. Great. With that said, we can go to View and then Terminal. We can clear it and then run npm install. That's going to install all of the dependencies inside of the package.json file. As you can see, we'll be using Redux Toolkit, Axios to make API calls, React Router DOM, and Swiper. So there's just a couple of packages. Everything else is going to be done entirely by you. With that said, our installation has been successful, and you can see that a new node underscore modules folder appeared. With that said, let's explore what do we have inside of the source folder. We have an assets folder for some simple constants like music genres and links for our navigation bar. We have a favicon, we have a loader SVG and a logo SVG just to provide some assets quickly so we don't have to search for them later on. Then we have our components folder. Inside of here, it might seem that I gave you essentially the whole app immediately but that is not the case. I simply provided you with empty files so that we can easily just dive into them and start creating the actual logic for those components. As you can see, everything is empty. When I said everything, I mean everything besides the music player component. Inside of the music player, you can see that we do have some files with already predefined logic. These are going to be only for the music player component that you can see at the bottom, such as the seek bar, the track bar, the volume bar, and so on. This is some logic that is repetitive and I didn't want you to spend time writing it out for hours and hours. Rather, I want you to learn as much as possible by watching this video. So for that reason, the music player component is provided. Everything else, including all the components and all the pages that you can see right here, is completely emptied. So you'll be starting from a clean slate. Great. 
Then diving into the Redux folder, there we have a store.js, which just has a simple configuration right there. But don't worry, we're going to explain everything that there is. We also have some features. So this right here is a Redux features for the music player. Again, the music player is going to be provided right there, such as setting the active song, next song, previous song, and so on. As you can see, most of this logic is repetitive. All of the other API calls will be made specifically by you later throughout this video. So don't worry, not a lot of code was actually provided. We also have the app.js file, which simply now calls all of those empty components that we have. So right there, we have a React router with different routes set up to call different components, which of course we have to create. But one more time, no worries, while going through this video, we're going to explain every single line of code of these files that are already here. Finally, we have an index.css file for some overrides for colors, and we are importing Tailwind here as we're gonna be using Tailwind to build this entire project. And then we have an index.js file where we have the general structure, we're importing the styles, and then finally, we have our router. Great. So now we understand our file and folder structure, but of course you're going to learn so much more about it once we actually dive into creating all of these components by ourselves. Great. Finally, we can go to view, terminal, and run npm run dev. This is going to run our application on localhost 3000. So simply hold control and then click it. As you can see, a bare bones structure of our application appeared. We just have a sidebar on top left. Then we have a music player component on the bottom. You can see it's just white right now without any logic. We have a loader and a discover component right here. And then on top right, we also have something known as a top play component. But when I say component, I actually mean just a piece of text that is right there. We're going to implement absolutely everything on our own. With that said, we can go back into the code, lower our terminal, open up the source, and we can start straight from the app. And as I promised, we can start by explaining the structure. Inside of here, we can see that we have a general routes structure. And the first route on our list is going to be the discover page. So let's hold control and then click it. And that's going to transport us to the discover.jsx, which is actually a page. So what do you say? Let's start by creating our discover page. And when I say discover, this is what I mean. This is going to be the final structure once our application is fully implemented. We're first starting by creating this div, and then we're gonna have a genre picker at the top, but then we have to fetch all of the songs from an API, display them, add these on hover effects, and list all of this beautiful artwork as well. So with that said, Let's get started by pulling our browser side by side by our Visual Studio code. There we go. Discover on one side and localhost 3000 on the other. Let's go ahead and get started with our Discover page. Our Discover page is going to be so much more than just that, because in there, we'll be importing all of the other components that we'll have to create before finalizing the Discover page. So let's start with a couple of imports. First, we can import the error component as well as the loader component. And finally, the song card component coming from da dot slash components. Just to remind you, all of those components are simply divs that say the component name. So if we get the song card, loader, and the error, they are all completely empty. And we can also fetch the genres coming from dot dot slash assets forward slash constants. So if we control click into them, you can see that this is an array with objects. And then each object has two key value pairs, the title, which is let's say a human readable name for the genre, and then the value, which looks like this, all uppercase, and then it also has underscores. Great we have everything we need to start creating our discover page. So let's turn this into a real component like this. There we go. And let's create a return statement. 
And for now, we can also leave just the console log right here, where we're going to console log the genres. There we go. So let's start with creating our discover page. We're going to have a div and that div is going to have a class name equal to flex and then flex dash call for column. In this case, as you can see, we're using tailwind and I have a special extension installed that automatically shows me what each property does. So if you go to extensions and type tailwind, you can see the tailwind CSS IntelliSense and you can install it as well. Throughout this video, we're going to write many different tailwind classes. If you are at any point unsure of what a specific property does, simply hover over it, which is going to give you more information on what styles is it exactly applying or go to tailwind CSS forward slash docs and type right here into the search. So that's going to be flex dash call. And as you can see, this sets the flex direction to position the items vertically. Great. With that said, we can continue creating our discover page. Inside of this wrapper div, we're going to have one more div. This div is going to have a class name equal to w dash full for full width flex justify dash between items dash center on small devices flex dash row usually flex dash column margin top or just mt dash four and then margin bottom dash 10. And inside of there, we're going to have a select component. Now you can easily see how useful Tailwind is. You can immediately set justify between item center, and you can also use different media queries on small devices, flex row, usually flex column. This is applying a special min width property. It's also much easier to write MT4 for margin top and also margin bottom. Great. Now inside of there, we want to have a genre select. If we go back to the live side, this is how it's going to look like. But on top of that select, we're also going to have an H2. So let's create an H2 property. And that H2 is going to say discover. As you can see, it's not looking that good right now. So let's give it some class names, such as font dash bold, text dash three XL, which is going to make it much bigger, text dash white, and text dash left. There we go. This is already looking much better. Now, later on, we're going to render a genre title. So for now, let's simply hard code it const genre title is equal to, and let's simply set it to pop. Now we can use that genre title to dynamically render it right there. Discover pop. Of course, we're going to change this whenever we use the select component. So now let's continue with the select. There, our select is going to have many elements that almost every input has, which is going to be an on change property, which for now we can leave as an empty callback function. We're also going to have a value, which is going to be set to an empty string for now. And finally, let's apply some class names. So that's going to be BG dash black text dash gray dash 300 P dash three for padding text dash SM for small text rounded dash LG. That's going to give it some rounded corners outline dash none to remove that ugly default outline that all the inputs have on small devices, margin top zero, usually margin top five. And inside of there, we want to map over the genres. So let's open a dynamic block of code and say genres dot map. We want to get a specific genre information. And for each one, we want to return an HTML5 option component. Inside of that option, we want to render the genre dot title. Now, if we save this, you can see that we have pop, but we also have a lot of different options we can choose from. Of course, each option has to have a key since we're mapping over it. And a key is going to be genre that value as it is unique. And also we can give it the actual value, which is going to be genre dot value. So once we select some of these properties, the genre that value is going to be applied. 
Of course, our onChange is not doing anything right now, so it's not gonna work. But soon enough, we're gonna make it work. Now, below this div right here, we're going to create one more div. This is going to be the wrapper for our songs. So now if we go back to the real side, now we're diving into displaying the actual songs we're fetching from the API. So going back, let's give it a class name equal to flex, flex dash wrap on small devices, justify dash start, usually justify dash center and gap dash eight. Inside of there, we want to map over the songs we're gonna fetch from the API. But for now, let's create a dynamic block of code. Let's create a demo array with numbers, for example, from one to 10. And then let's pretend each number is a song. For each song, we want to return something like this. Not something, exactly like this. We want to return a song card component, which is a self-closing component. And we want to pass a couple of things into it. We want to pass a key, which is going to be equal to the song. We also want to pass the song itself, which is going to be equal to song. Now I made a mistake here. Each song is actually going to have a key property. We'll be able to look into that while we're fetching the data from the API. So this is going to be song.key. And we also have to provide the index of a specific song. So that's going to be i is equal to i, and that i is coming as the second parameter to our map function. Great, that's going to be all that we need to pass for now. Now, if we save this, you can see that we're not properly closing something, and that something is going to be one extra parenthesis right there. There we go. So now we can simply see song card listed 10 times. Now, there is a specific reason why I started with the discover component first. That's because we are gonna immediately dive into the most important functionalities of this application. And those are fetching the actual songs from the Shazam core API. And then secondly, once we fetch them, actually working on the looks and on the styles of displaying them right there. So let's now focus on fetching the data from the API. To do that, we're going to follow the recommended Redux toolkit structure. So let's open up the file tree. And if you go inside of the index.jsx, there you can notice that we are already importing the provider component from React Redux, and then we're wrapping our application with it. You can also notice that we are providing one parameter or one property to our provider, and that is store equal to store. That store variable is coming from dot slash redux forward slash store, which is right here. If you look into that, there is a simple setter function called configure store coming from at redux.js forward slash toolkit. And then also we talked about the functionality for the player, which we can skip for now. Now we have to focus on new functionalities that we want to implement and add to our Redux store. And those are going to be to fetch our songs. So if we're going to follow the structure, we need to create a new folder inside of the Redux folder. It's going to be called services. So which service do we want to call? And then inside of there, we're going to create a new file called Shazam core dot JS. This is going to be our main file in which we're going to focus on making those API calls. So of course, let's focus on fetching the correct data from Rapid API. As I've told you, we're going to use a cool extension that's going to allow us to more easily see what endpoints can we call. So go to the extensions tab and search for Rapid API. There you can see the Rapid API client extension. So just make sure to install it. Once you install it, you can see it right here in the extensions tab. It's gonna look something like this. You can see I've used it the last time for the YouTube API video. For now, we can delete that request and we can create a new environment. You can do that by clicking create a new project and let's click create new project. We want to keep it local for now and let's call it lyrics. There we go. We immediately have our first request right there. 
Now I'm going to zoom this out a bit so we can see everything better. And let's see what do we have to fetch first. Let's say that we want to get the top charts. That's going to be the most important API call for now. So that's going to be world chart. So right here, let's document it by saying something like fetch world chart. And we can figure out what API endpoint do we have to call. So looking at this right here, this is going to be the URL. Let's copy it and let's paste it right here. There we go. This is looking right. But we can also see that there are some required parameters that we have to pass. So let's go to headers and let's add a new header called X rapid API key. Let's paste the name right there. And then you can copy your key straight from here and paste it there. And we also have to add X rapid API host as well as its value. Once you do that, let's click send. And as you can see, immediately, right inside of our Visual Studio code, we got back the music data. Let's explore it in a couple of different ways. First, let's look into the headers. Or even before, let's look into the info. Right here, we can see that we made a request to this URL and that it went OK. It took only 466 milliseconds. We can see our entire request right here alongside the headers and we can also see the response. That response has a couple of headers. We can see everything in the text format or a JSON tree format, but primarily we wanna focus on the JSON text format. Right here, we can see everything that we are getting. So we have an array and then we have a couple of different objects, which we can even collapse. You can quickly see that each object is a music object and it contains a layout, a type, key, title, subtitle, and much more. So already, this is great. We know that we can call this API straight from our code. One really cool thing you can do with Rapid API extension is click this toggle right there, select TypeScript, and then click this code icon. This is going to generate all the types of everything that you're getting back from that API endpoint. You can see all the artists, hub, images, layout, properties, and even what those properties inside of the root object contain. Isn't that crazy? So if you wanted to use TypeScript in your project, then this is incredibly helpful as you don't have to write those types on your own. In this case, we're not using TypeScript, so we can close that. Now, another really cool thing we can do is right here, request a code snippet to get this API endpoint inside of our code. So let's request a JavaScript snippet and you can even choose between fetch and Axios. So let's go for fetch and click code right there. This is going to generate a code input. So let's go ahead and copy it. And now you know how to use the rapid API extension. So you can use it for all future API endpoints. For now, let's go back as we learned a lot and let's paste it right there. This is where we're going to be calling our API. There are a couple of differences we're going to have to make to this code because we're using Redux Toolkit. So let's start by creating something called an API because that's exactly what we're doing. I'm going to zoom back in and let's collapse these for now. We're going to say export const Shazam core API. That's going to be equal to, and now we have to import something. We're going to import two utility functions coming from Redux Toolkit. One is called create API, and the other one is called fetch base query. And these are coming from add redux.js forward slash toolkit forward slash query forward slash react. Now we can say export const Shazam core API and call the create API function. We're going to provide just one object inside of it. An API needs to have a reducer path. And that is going to be simply a name of our API. Let's call it Shazam core API. Just by having this, it's enough to call it from within our store. So let's go back to our store.js. And from inside of here, we can import our Shazam core API by saying import 
inside of curly braces, Shazam core API coming from dot slash services forward slash Shazam core. And then inside of the reducer, the structure looks like this. Inside of square brackets, we can say Shazam core API dot reducer path is equal to or rather a colon Shazam core API dot reducer. And we can add a comma. We can also specify the default middleware. And that's going to look like this middleware is equal to and then we have an arrow function. Inside of there, we get the first parameter called get default middleware. And then you simply want to call that as a function, get default middleware. And then you call a dot concat function, where we want to add the middlewares of all reducers we're using in our app. In this case, we have simply one, which is going to be Shazam core API dot middleware. Great. Now that's going to be it for the setup and we can go back inside of our Shazam core. And by the way, if you're wondering how am I coming up with this code, this is something that you do in every single Redux toolkit application. It is a boilerplate code that you can find in their documentation. So nothing to worry about. Now let's go back to the Shazam core. Our API also needs to have a base query and a base query is going to be a function call to fetch base query to which we're going to provide an object. Inside of that object, we're going to have our base URL. And that base URL is simply going to be a string. Now this code generated by rapid API is going to be useful right there as we can simply copy our base URL. So let's copy everything all the way to v1 as that's our base query. So that's always going to be the same. And then different endpoints are going to be added to that base query. Now we also need to have the headers. So let's call the prepare headers. And Redux toolkit right here is automatically calling this function. So it's a callback arrow function. And it's going to prepare headers for us before each and every API call. So we won't have to provide options every time. The only thing we need to do is say headers dot set x dash rapid API, or let's copy that just so we don't mess it up. So copy it from the headers, paste it right there, and then add a comma. And there we have to get our key. So for now, simply copy it from here and paste it, of course, as a string. Now we no longer need these options. As a matter of fact, we also don't need this fetch function as well. Great. The headers are coming from here as the first parameter to prepare headers. Later on, we're going to move this to environment variables. So it's not so plainly listed right here. Finally, you have to return the headers after you set a specific property. So let's say return headers. Great. This was the prep work. Now we can go below our base query right here. And we can add another property called endpoints. There as the first parameter, we get something known as builder. And again, we pass in an object. In here, we're building all of the endpoints of the API we want to call. In this case, the first one is going to be get top charts. We call the builder dot query, provide an object again. And then inside of there, we say query is that's going to be forward slash charts forward slash world as we saw before. And that's all that we have to do. Everything else is going to be done for us. And now Redux toolkit allows us to call this as a hook. The only thing you have to do is say export const use get top charts query. So as you can notice, it takes the name get top charts, adds the use in front, and then query at the back. And that is equal to Shazam core API. Now you can copy this use get top charts query. And we can go back to our discover component, or rather discover page. From there, we can import use get top charts query. And it's going to be coming from 
it's going to be .NET slash Redux forward slash services forward slash Shazam core. Great. Now we can call it from the top of our component as any other hook. Const, let's leave the object empty for now. And let's call it use get top charts query. Great. Now, what do we get back? That is the main question. We get back three different things. First, we get the actual data. That's going to be the result of the API call. Then we get the is fetching property. That's going to allow us to know if we're currently fetching. Therefore, we can show the loading state. And finally, we also get the error property. That's going to allow us to know if an error has happened. So as you can see, on top of allowing you to so easily create an endpoint, you also get additional functionalities, which are incredibly useful inside of your components. And you don't have to clutter the component view to focus on the data fetching logic. All of the logic is contained right there. And I know it might seem like a lot of setup right now, but that's it. We've done the entire setup. So now when we focus on all the other endpoints for fetching the artists, the songs, the genres, and so on, it's going to look just like this. You're going to add additional properties and additional endpoints. Great. With that said, let's go back to the discover component and let's see what we're getting back as data. Since we use the rapid API extension, you should already know how it's going to look like. It's going to be an array of different songs. But let's go ahead and check it together right now. Going back to localhost 3000, we can open up the inspect element, go to console, and reload the page. As you can see, we're getting undefined as we have the endpoint definition dot query is not a function. So let's go back to where we're defining this function. And let's make sure that everything is done correctly. I've done one mistake. And that is as query, you don't simply set a string right here. In this case, it does make sense as it's just a static string. But later on, imagine if you have to call something like forward slash charts, and then you pass in a genre like pop, how would you make this dynamic? How would you change this to rock? If it's a string, you cannot do that. So Redux toolkit did something differently. If we now go back a bit, what you can do is you can check that query is actually not a string. It is a function that returns a string. So let's do just that. Let's turn it into an arrow function that instantly returns this string. If we save that, you can notice that now we get 50 songs back. This is going to be incredibly useful later on when you need to pass real data into the parameters of that function. For now, we're fine with it as it is. And as you can see, the data is looking exactly as it did in the rapid API extension. So this is great. Now we can focus on displaying those songs right inside of our discover component. We know that we're getting back the data. So let's remove it from the console log. And instead of mapping over our dummy array, let's map over the real data. We can also add a question mark in case the data doesn't exist yet. And we can also add a couple of checks and loading states. It's so easy to do that using Redux toolkit. So we can say if is fetching. In that case, we want to return a loader component. And we can also pass a title to that loader. So title is equal to loading songs dot dot dot. And then if we have the error, we can simply return the error component. Great. Now if we go back and reload the page, you can see that nothing happens. And that's because both of these components are empty. So let's quickly dive into the loader by holding control and then clicking it. And then let's implement the loader component. We can start by importing the loader coming from dot dot slash assets. We also know that we're accepting a title as a prop. We're going to have a wrapper div that's going to have a class name equal to w dash full flex justify dash center items dash center and flex dash call. Inside of there, we want to render a self-closing image tag. 
that's going to have a source equal to loader. We can also give it an alt tag equal to loader. And let's give it a class name equal to w-32, h-32, and object-contain. Finally, let's add an h1 below the image. That h1 is simply going to render either the title, or if the title doesn't exist, it's simply going to say loading. And let's give it some class names. That's going to be font-bold, text-2xl, text-white, and margin top 2. That's going to be it for our loader component. Now we can close it, and if we reload the page, you can notice that briefly it shows loading songs. We can do the same thing for the error, so control click to go into it. In this case, we don't have to import anything, and we can simply render a wrapper div that's going to have a class name equal to w full flex justify dash center items dash center. We can also simply show an H1, and this H1 is going to be the same as the one in the loader component. So let's simply copy it and let's paste it right here. In this case, it's always going to say a static message of something went wrong. Please try again. There we go. Let's save it. And of course, we're not going to see the error right now as everything is working properly. That means that we can now go back into the discover component. We are now mapping over the real songs, which we can see because there are 50 songs right here listed as song cards component. But of course, that song card is just a lonely single word, song card. So what do you say that we implement the song card look right away? By implementing the look of a single card, we're actually reusing this component 50 times, which is the most beautiful thing about React. As soon as we implement the code for one, all of the music data is gonna show as we're pulling real dynamic data from the Rapid API and we're using React. So the final product is going to look something like this. Let's go ahead and get started with the song card component. To start implementing the song card component, we can first import a link component coming from react-router-dom. We can also import something known as use dispatch, which is coming from react-redux. We're going to discuss this further once we start using it really soon. We can also import the play pause component coming from dot slash play pause. And of course, let's spell it properly. Also from the player functionality, we have to import the play pause function as well as the set active songs. And that's gonna be coming from dot dot slash redux forward slash features forward slash player slice. Great. Now it looks like I typed form here, but that was supposed to be from. There we go. Finally, let's get started with implementing our song card. We already know that we're passing a couple of things into our song card from the discover component. So right here, we're passing the key, which is just necessary for React to know which song are we showing, but we are passing the index as well as the song as props. So going back, we can now accept that song as well as the index and we can start with the JSX. Let's pull this a bit to the right side. There we go. And we can have our wrapper div. That div is going to have a class name equal to flex, flex dash call, W dash inside of square brackets, 250 pixels. If you wanna specify a specific amount, you can use square brackets. So Tailwind knows you're talking about specific pixel width. We can also give it a P-4 for padding, BG-white divided by five, BG-opacity-80, backdrop-blur-small. 
animate dash slide up, rounded dash LG, and cursor dash pointer. Now inside of there, we can also create another div. Now you can notice that something breaks right there and that's because we should have imported set active song rather than set active songs as that doesn't exist. Now you can see those beautiful divs, they are just lightly colored so it seems like they're appearing above the background. And if you reload, you can notice that they slide up, which looks great. Now this inner div is also gonna have a class name and that's gonna be set to relative w dash full and h dash 56. That's gonna be the height and it's gonna be set to group. Inside of there, we're gonna have one more div. This div is going to have a class name that's going to be dynamic. So it's gonna have a template string. We can set it as absolute. Inset is going to be set to zero justify dash center, items dash center, bg dash black, bg dash opacity dash 50, group dash hover. So once we hover over the group, we want to make it flex. So colon flex. And now we got to figure out if the song we're currently showing is the song that is actively playing. So let's open up a dollar sign and curly braces. And let's say active song question mark dot title is triple equal to song dot title. If it is, then we can set the property to flex and BG dash black and BG dash opacity dash 70. If it's not, so let's close this properly. If it's not currently playing, then we can simply set it to hidden. There we go. Now we're gonna notice that the active song currently doesn't exist. So let's simply hard code it. Let's expand this, add a return statement. There we go. And I'm gonna hard code the active song to be something like test. There we go. And you can notice that now if you hover over it, it's looking great. And it's gonna look the same as if the song is currently playing. Great, we have all of those different song cards right here. Now, inside of this div, we're gonna implement the play pause functionality. So once you click over the song, you should be able to play it or pause it. So let's expand this div and let's call the play pause component inside of it, which is a self-closing component. For now, that's not gonna do anything as we haven't yet implemented the play pause component. What we can do though is below this div, provide an image that's gonna have an alt tag equal to song underscore IMG and also a source equal to song dot images and then question mark dot cover art. Now, the moment of truth, if we save this, there we go. We're fetching 50 different cover arts for 50 different songs coming straight from the Rapid API Hub. More specifically, coming from the Shazam Core API. This is looking great. Congratulations on coming to this part of the video, but we are just getting started. Now we're gonna add the song title, song subtitle, and then we're gonna focus on implementing the play functionality so the entire music player will look great really soon. Let's focus on adding the title and the subtitle first. So below the div that's below the image, create another div. That div is going to have a class name equal to margin top four or MT4 flex and then flex dash call as we wanna show the title and the subtitle one below another. We're gonna also have a P tag and that P tag is going to actually be a link. Inside of that link, let's render the song dot title. Now let's duplicate that P tag one more time below as one is going to be for the title and the other one is gonna be for the subtitle. So we can say subtitle right there. 
Now, if we save this, you can see yours by Jin. We have Under the Influence by Chris Brown, but it's really hard to see what does it say. So what we can do is apply some class names. To our first B tag, we can say font-semi-bold, text-lg, text-white, and truncate. So if the title is too long, we're gonna immediately truncate it, and Tailwind makes this so handy, by just saying truncate, it applies overflow hidden, text overflow of ellipsis to add those three dots, and white space, no wrap. The link is going to go to it's going to be dynamic forward slash songs forward slash and then song question mark dot key. So when clicking on this link, you're going to be led to a specific song details page. Finally, for the class names for the subtitle, that's going to be text dash SM truncate text dash gray dash 300 and margin top one to divide it from the title. Finally, we also want to apply a link right there. It's gonna point to, we have to check if song.artists exists. Then we wanna go to a dynamic string of forward slash artists, forward slash song question mark dot artists. And then we wanna get the first artist by specifying the index of zero question mark dot Adam ID like this. Otherwise, if the artist doesn't exist, we can simply point to forward slash top artists like this. Now it looks like we didn't close our template string right there. If we do close it, everything should be good. If we save it, there we go. This is looking much better. I ain't worried by one Republic. And we can also see Tom Cruise right there. This is looking great. It's already looking so much more like the final product. But don't worry, we're gonna get there as well. The next thing is this hover functionality where you can hover and then this nice icon shows and it actually triggers the music player once you click it. So let's focus on implementing that next. To implement our music player, first we're gonna have to work on our play and pause component. But before we go into it, we first have to pass a couple of props to it. Props such as song is equal to song. The other props are going to be the functions that they're going to handle the play and pause functionality. So let's say handle pause is equal to handle pause click. And handle play is equal to handle play click. These are the functions that we are yet to create. So let's create them right here. Const handle pause click for now it's going to be just an arrow function and we can repeat the process for const handle play click and that's also going to be an arrow function we also have to know which song is the currently active song and are we currently playing and we can know that not inside of the song card component but rather inside of our discover component this is where we have to handle that global state of are we showing the player, are we playing, or are we not. In here, we'll have to make use of special Redux toolkit functions. So let's import them. Import use dispatch as well as use selector. And that's going to be coming from React Redux. These are, as you can see, hooks. So we can call them right at the top of our component. Const dispatch is equal to use dispatch and we call it as a hook. And then also const something for now, we're going to leave it blank. An empty object is equal to use selector. So how Redux works is you have one huge global state that looks like this, like an object. You can think of this as a cake. So this is one huge round cake. And then a cake can have different slices. So we're going to have a slice for the music player functionality. And also we're going to have another slice for the Shazam core functionality to fetch songs. 
So you're wondering which piece of the pie or of the cake do you want to select? Do you more like chocolate? So let's say choco right there. Or do you more like vanilla? What do you select? Well, to select a specific piece of the cake, we're going to use the use selector function. Let me show you how it works. As the first parameter to this callback function, you get access to the entire cake. So let's say cake. Now you know what you want to get and you know your cake has it. So you say cake dot vanilla. That's what I want to pull into from this state. So now let's put that in Redux toolkit language. We're going to have a state and you want to get the state dot player. So you're pulling the player information from the entire state. And what specifically you want to get, we want to get the active song as well as the is playing property. How do we know our state has these? Well, if we go back to our store right here to our features and the player slice, we can see the initial state and all of the variables that the state will eventually have is active is playing active song genre list ID and so much more. Now that we're fetching those, let's pass them over to our song card component. So we're going to have a song, we're going to have the is playing, which is equal to is playing, as well as active song is equal to active song. Now we can go back to the song card, we can get those properties from here. So that's going to be song is playing active song. And then we also have the index. And there's one thing I missed, we also want to pass the entire data object into the songs, we're gonna need it later on. So now if we go into the song card, we can also get the data right inside of here. We no longer need this dummy active song, as now we have the real one. Now that we have all of that information, we can pass it over to the play pause component. So we're going to pass the is playing is equal to is playing as well as active song is equal to active song. And finally, we can control click to go into the play pause component. This component will be fairly straightforward. We're going to import two different icons. That's going to be F a pause circle. And I think you can guess it. F a play circle coming from react dash icons forward slash F a, we already know we're getting quite a lot of different props, such as is playing active song, song, handle pause, and handle play. Finally, based on those props, we can have a ternary operator. So we can say if is playing and and active song question mark dot title is triple equal to the current song dot title, then we want to show a pause icon. So F a pause circle. Else, we want to show a play icon. So F a play circle as a self closing icon. So one more time, if we are playing, and if the active song title is equal to the current list song title, then that means that we're currently playing it. And we want to show a pause icon. Otherwise, we want to be able to play it as we can right here. Now let's apply a couple of different properties. We can do it at the same time by holding alt and then adding more cursors. Let's set the size to 35 pixels the class name to text dash gray dash 300. And then on click, we want to call the handle pause, as well as on the bottom one, handle play. And that's going to be it for this component. As you can see, now this is looking great. Of course, the last thing we have to do is actually make the player work. This by itself is not going to do anything as if we go to our handle play right here, you can notice right now it is entirely empty. So how do we actually 
make the song play. We have to call that thing called dispatch. So we imported it before, use dispatch. Const dispatch is use dispatch. We just initiate it right there. And now going back to that cake analogy, we have different cakes. And then we have the selectors for different pieces of those cakes. What dispatch does is dispatch allows you to make changes to that cake. So if you say dispatch, then we can do something like add chocolate powder. There we go, like this. Or we can do something like dispatch. Uh, let's do add chocolate. And in this case, we can do dressing. There we go. So these are the verbs of doing something to the state. Do something to our cake from which then later on we'll be able to select those pieces we've done something to. Hopefully that makes sense. So how do we use this patch? Well, let's say this patch, set active song, and then to that we want to pass an object, including the song we want to play, the data for all the songs, and then the index of that song. We also want to trigger the dispatch play pause to true as we are right now playing. The only thing we want to do if we want to handle pause is dispatch the play pause and then pass the false as the parameter. Now, if we hover over a song and click it, of course, we're going to get an error because that's our usual life as developers we're always experiencing different bugs. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it right here while creating these tutorials. Bugs happen. And that's also something that I emphasize in the JSM Masterclass experience. If you haven't already, enter your email down below because I really want to see you in the next cohort of our program. There, I'm gonna teach you how to build applications such as this one completely on your own. Great. With that said, let's figure out what this error is all about. It seems that the error occurred in the music player component. Yep, it seems to be it. Cannot read properties of undefined reading length. So we're trying to read and understand what's happening. Let's reload the page one more time. And let's click on a song. Actually, it just started playing. So sometimes, we don't have errors. Sometimes Vite or Create React App or somebody else is messing with us and you simply need to reload your application. We are good developers after all. So now let's expand this. And as you can see, we get that beautiful music player at the bottom. Of course, these components have been coded before. So if you wanna dive into a bit more depth on how this is working, just go to our components, music player, and then you can dive deeper into the controls and then how all of this is functioning. It's mainly just some setup, setting different icons, as you can see right there, setting the tracking bars from the volume as well as the playing time. And that's essentially it. With that said, I'm going to turn down the volume. We can also see that if we click on a new song, it's going to be highlighted and then we can pause it. So this is working perfectly. Let's see if we can pause it. That works as well. And if we click next song, that works as well. So our complete music player functionality is now done. Of course, we're not happy with the application. It's not looking as I promised you, it's gonna look at the beginning of this video. We are yet to create the sidebar the search top bar, as well as the top charts and top artist components. We also have to make the genre picker work, as well as implement three additional pages around you, top artists, and top charts. There's still a lot more work to do, but as you can notice, we'll be reusing the components we've already created all around our application. If we go to around you, you can see that we're reusing the same song card component we have created so far. Same thing for the top artists and top charts. Isn't that great? 
and that's also what we teach in the Filmpire course. If you haven't checked it out yet, and if you wanna master React, then this is the course for you. We teach you how to create reusable components, beautiful designs using Material UI, dark mode, light mode, using artificial voice intelligence to be able to traverse the application, add loadings, and so much more. The link is going to be down in the description. With that said, let's go back to creating our great application. And for now, I think we can focus on the sidebar. As now that bottom bar, the music player is done, everything is looking great, and the sidebar is the only thing that sticks out. So we can close all of the currently open files. Back in the app, the sidebar is right here at the top. So let's control click it, and we're ready to start implementing it. To start implementing the sidebar, let's first import a couple of things. We can import the use state hook coming from React. Let's also import something known as a nav link coming from react-router-dom. We can also import one icon. So that's going to be ri close line coming from react-icons forward slash ri. Finally, we can import the logo inside of curly braces coming from dot dot slash assets. And the final thing is to import the links. So we can say import links also inside of curly braces coming from dot dot slash assets forward slash constants. There we go. Now we can look into them really quickly. Those links is simply an array with objects inside of it. Each object has a name for a specific property. We can look into it right here. If we open up the sidebar, discover around you top artists and top charts. It also has a URL we want to go to. And then finally, it has an icon. Now we know what we're working with. Inside of our sidebar, we need to know if the mobile nav bar is currently open in case we are on mobile. So let's create a new state const mobile menu open and set mobile menu open. That's going to be equal to use state and at the start it's going to be set to false. Now that we have that, we can open up a return statement where we can simply wrap everything with an empty react fragment. There, let's create the initial div. This div is going to wrap our entire navigation bar. So inside of here, let's give it some class names equal to on medium devices, it's going to be flex. So on medium and higher, usually it's going to be hidden. So this is only for desktop devices. Flex is going to be set to call. W is going to be set to 240 pixels, which is the width. Padding Y is going to be 10. So this is on the Y axis, top and bottom. Padding X is going to be set to four, that's left and right. And then BG is going to be a special color. So we can say BG dash inside of square brackets, hash or pound 191624. This is gonna be a really dark version of a blue color. Inside of there, we can render an image. So that's gonna be a self-closing image tag with a source equal to logo. Alt tag is also going to be logo and we can give it a class name equal to w full h 14 and object contain. Now, if we save this, you can see that it disappears from the left side. And that's because we are right now on mobile. At least it seems that way. So now let's expand to desktop. And there we go. We see our beautiful lyrics sidebar. Now, since we'll be reusing our navigation bar, both on mobile and on desktop devices to make everything reusable, we can create a new component right on top of our sidebar. Const nav links. It's going to be an arrow function component. And it can have an instant return. So we can simply have parentheses right here. We can now render that nav links component right here below our image. And inside of there, let's of course create some code. So we're going to add a div, which is going to wrap everything. And it's going to have a class name 
equal to MT-10 to divide it a bit from that navbar image. And let's do this properly. There we go. Inside of there, we want to loop over the links, which we're importing from the assets. So we can say links dot map, we get each individual item or a link, and we want to return something for it. We're going to return a simple nav link, which we're importing from the top. That is not going to be a self-closing component. Rather, we're going to put something inside of there, and that's going to be item dot name. Now, if we save this, you can see discover around you top artists and top charts, but we have to just style it a bit better. So let's give it a class name. Class name is equal to flex, flex dash row, justify dash start, items dash center, margin y is eight, text is small, font is medium, text is gray 400, and on hover, text is going to be cyan 400. Now, if we save this, it already looks much better. There we go. That's beautiful. And we can also make it functional by giving it a key equal to item.name and also give it a two property. So once we click this, where do we want to go? That's going to be item.2. And we can also give it an on click. So right here, after our class name, on click. There we want to call a callback function and simply call the handle click function like this. But we can call that handle click only on mobile devices. So what we have to do first is check if handle click exists. We can do that by saying if handle click or rather just type it out and then we can say and and handle click. So if handle click exists, only then call it. And that's going to be coming through props handle click. Otherwise, if we didn't have this check in this case on desktop devices, when we're not passing the handle click, it will try to call something that is not a function, which would result in an error. But again, for mobile devices, we will need to have it. So this is just a simple check we're doing. We also want to render the icon above the item name so we can render the item dot icon self closing tag and provided a class name equal to w dash six h dash six and margin right two. if we save this, this is looking exactly like our sidebar. This is great. But usually the mobile sidebars are a bit tricky. So now below this div, we can focus on the mobile sidebar. To focus on our mobile sidebar, we can create a new div right below this one. And it looks like we lost that React fragment, so we can bring it back. That's going to be right here, a simple React fragment. And now adjacent to this div, we can create another div, which is going to be our mobile sidebar. So let's create it. There we go. It's going to have a class name equal to absolute. On medium devices, it's going to be hidden. So on medium and upwards. Usually it's going to be visible, so it's going to have a block property and it's going to be positioned on top six and right three. In this case, we're just talking about the icon to open and close the actual menu. Later on, we're going to implement the menu. So for now, let's simply check if the menu is open. So a dynamic block of code, if mobile menu open, in that case, we want to return ri close line, which is a self closing icon. Otherwise, we can show the HI outline menu. There we go. So we want to show the menu to be able to open it. Now, the outline menu, I don't think we are importing it. So we can get it right here from the top, that's going to be import HI outline menu coming from react dash icons forward slash HI. Now let's add some properties to these icons. We can select both of them by holding alt and then clicking inside of them. And let's give it a class name equal to W dash six H dash six text dash white and margin right two. there we go. Now, of course, we have to switch to a bit of a smaller screen 
because now you can see that icon appear right here at the top right of the screen. There we go, the menu icon. With that said, we can now add our actual menu. To do that, we can for now copy the existing desktop menu as we're gonna modify it. And then below this div, which is just an icon to open the menu, we can paste the actual menu. Now the image is going to be almost the same. The nav links is also going to be similar, but what we are gonna change is gonna be the class name of the outer div. There, we can make it dynamic first of all. So it's gonna look like this. Let's give it a property of absolute. Top dash zero, so it appears at the top. H dash screen, meaning full height. W dash two over three, so two thirds. BG dash gradient dash two dash top left, or TL. And then from which color do we wanna transition? From white over 10. And then two dash, we can give it a hash color, 483D8B. So this is just a nice bluish color or rather a purplish color that I found which matches our aesthetic. We can give it a backdrop dash blur dash LG, a Z index of 10 to appear over the elements, a padding of six on medium devices hidden and a smooth transition. Now we wanna check if the menu is currently open. So we can say if mobile menu open question mark, then we're gonna give it a left of zero. Else we're going to give it a minus left dash full. So it's not gonna be visible. Now, if we save this, as you can see, nothing happens. But if we click the menu icon, still nothing happens. And that's because we didn't provide that handle click to the nav links function. So we can say handle click is equal to a callback function where we're going to provide the set mobile menu open and we're going to give it false. So we wanna close it. But to these icons right there, we also need to give that property, but of course to open it. So on the menu, let's give it a on click property equal to a callback function where we call the set mobile menu open and we provide true. We can copy that on click, paste it right here as well. And there we're gonna provide false. There we go. Now I had to reload the page, but once you reload it and click right there, you can notice that it opens up. It takes two thirds of the screen, which is great on mobile devices. It's gonna look so great. And there we go. You have a fully functional glass polymorphism menu. This is looking great. Now, what you can notice is that if you go to the top of the screen and then if you reload on mobile devices, for some reason, it scrolls back down. But don't worry, this is only happening on mobile devices, not on desktop, and we're going to also fix it really soon. For now, our sidebar is done. We can expand our application and see how it looks like. Now we have a great sidebar. We also have the songs. And if we click right here, they actually play. So everything is looking great. Now, before we implement different pages, such as around you top artists and top charts, what do you say that we focus on adding the top charts and top artists right here on the right side of the screen? That's going to give you the top five in terms of artists and charts. And you can click see more, which is also going to lead us to those pages, which we have to create soon. So to create that, let's call it a widget we can go back to our application and we can jump into the top play component. It is right here below all of our routes, meaning that it's gonna show up no matter which page we're on. So let's go ahead and control click it, top play, and let's focus on implementing that component next. To start creating our top play component, we can first import use effect as well as use ref from React. We can also import a link component coming from react-router-dom. We're gonna also use the use selector as well as the use dispatch hooks coming from react-redux. We're gonna use the swiper as well as the swiper slide coming from swiper 
forward slash react. That's a special package we're using to create the swiper for the profiles. We can see that right here if we scroll to the top. And there we go. You can notice that right here, we can swipe through the artists. We're going to also import something known as a free mode coming from Swiper. Swiper also requires us to import some CSS modules. So let's import Swiper forward slash CSS, as well as import Swiper forward slash CSS forward slash free mode. Now let's import the play and pause component, which we created before. So that's going to be import play pause from that slash play pause. And we can also import the play pause function, as well as the set active song, which we already know are coming from da dot slash redux forward slash features forward slash player slice. So that is that one slice of state that has to do something with the play and pause functionality. We can also import a hook we already created, use get top charts query. And that's coming from da dot slash redux forward slash services forward slash Shazam core. Great. Now we have all that we need to start creating our top play component. First, let's initialize some states. We can start at the top by initializing the dispatch function. Const dispatch is equal to use dispatch like this. We're going to also get the active song as well as the is playing property. And that's going to be equal to the use selector where we get the state. And then we choose a specific piece of state in this case, a player. We can also get the data which is equal to use get top charts query. We already used this before inside of the discover component. Of course, you know that you can already get the is fetching property and the error, but in this case, we won't be needing it. And we can also create an empty div ref, which is going to be equal to use ref at the start set to null. We're going to use this later on to scroll to the top of the page. Now we're going to also use the play and pause functionality. As you can see, we have those play buttons right there. So we can grab the functions to do that from the discover component as we have already used that there. Or no, that's not going to be discover rather that's going to be the song card. There we created the handle pause click and handle play click. So let's copy those two, go back to the top play, and then let's paste them right here. Great. Now on top of that, we're going to also create a new variable called top place. That's going to be the top songs. And we can say data question mark dot slice. And we only want to take the first five songs. So this is what top plays are. And then the data is list of 50 most popular world chart songs. Great. Now we have a lot of different states that we are yet to make use of. So let's start creating our JSX by saying return, and we can wrap everything in a div. We can go back to our version of the application and again, scroll to the top. This div is going to have a ref equal to div ref. And again, if we now save this and reload the page, you can notice that for some reason it scrolls down. So let's immediately make this div ref work. We can do that by adding a use effect right here at the top. There we go. This use effect is going to have a dependency array of nothing. So it's going to only happen at the start, at least for now. And we can say div ref dot current dot scroll into view. And the behavior is going to be set to a string of smooth. Now if we save this, you can notice that it scrolls to the top. So if I reload the page, it stays there. And that's because we have to remove this dependency array. In this case, we want to make sure this happens as soon as the page is loaded. And there we go. This way it tracks it. If you reload one more time, it scrolls to the top. Now we are ready to start creating the top plays, which is going to be the top charts and the top artists. We can open up this div and give it a class name. 
the class name is going to be on extra large devices, margin left is going to be set to six. Usually margin left is going to be set to zero. On extra large devices, margin bottom is going to be set to zero. Usually margin bottom is going to be set to six. Flex is going to be set to one. On extra large devices, max dash w dash is going to be set to 500 pixels. And then usually max width is going to be full. We can give it a flex and a flex dash call. Inside of there, we're going to have one more div. This div is going to have a class name equal to w dash full flex and flex dash call. Now, if I save this, we cannot really yet see anything. So I'm going to go back and add a few more things inside of this div. We're going to add one more div. And this div is going to have a class name equal to flex, flex dash row, justify dash between and items dash center. Inside of there, we're going to have an H2. This H2 is going to say top charts. Below that H2, we're going to have a link that's going to go to the top charts. So make sure to put the forward slash at the start. So forward slash top dash charts. And inside of there, we can have a P tag that's going to say see more. If we save this, we can barely see the top charts and see more. But let's apply some class names to the H2 first. That's going to be text-white, font-bold, and text-2xl. That's so much better. And let's do the same thing for this P tag by giving it a class name equal to text-gray-300, text-base, and cursor-pointer. Okay, that's already so much better. Now, if we expand it, you can notice that it appears right here at the right side. Let's collapse it to the mobile view again. The mobile view would look something like this. So again, if we reload the page, there we go. So we can see top charts and see more. Of course, this is going to look so much better really soon. Now we can go below this first div that's below the link and create a new div that's going to have a class name equal to MT-4 flex, flex dash call, and gap dash one. Inside of there, we want to map over the top songs, or we call them top plays. So top plays, question mark dot map, we get each individual song as well as the index. And we want to return the top chart card. Like this, it is a self closing component. And this top chart card, is going to be created right here above our top play component, as this is the only place where we're going to use it. So let's do const top chart card, try saying that three times fast top chart card. <laughs> and then we're gonna simply have an instant return right there. So that's going to be a div. And that div is going to have a class name. For now, let's give it a w dash full flex flex dash row items dash center. On hover, we're going to give it a BG off. It's going to be hash 4C 426 E. There we go. We can also give it padding Y of two padding in general of four rounded dash LG cursor dash pointer and margin bottom two. For now inside of there, let's simply render the song title. So song dot title. And the song, we're going to pass through the props. So right here, we're gonna get the song, as well as the index. Great. Now let's go back and pass the song and the index to our top chart card. Song is equal to song and I is equal to I. Since we're mapping over this, we also need to pass a key which is going to be equal to song dot key. Now, if we save this, you can notice that we get five different songs. That's going to be yours under the influence. I'm good. Calm down. And this one right here. Great. It's hard to see them right now, but we're going to focus on the design really soon. Before we do that, let's implement the top artists swiper as well. 
So right below this div and below one another div, we can create a new div that's gonna be for our top artists. But if you think about it, the top charts and see more is quite similar to top artists and see more. So we can copy what we already have. That's going to be this div that contains the top charts and see more. And we can paste it right here. But of course we have to wrap it in one more div. So that's going to be a div like this. That's going to have a class name equal to w dash full flex flex dash call and margin top of eight. Now inside of there, we can put the div we just copied. Now, if we save that and go back, you can notice that now we have top charts and see more, but we want to change that to top artists as well as top artists right here. Great. And below that, we can render the swiper component. So that's going to be below the link and below this div right there. We're going to render the swiper component. We're going to also pass some options to it. So let's say slide per view is going to be set to a string of auto. And if you want to learn more about different options, you can pass the swiper, simply Google for swiper react MPM, and you'll be able to see the full documentation. We can specify the space between set to 15 pixels as well. We can give it a free mode property. We can give it a centered slides property. We can also do centered slides bounds. We can give it modules equal to an array that simply has free mode inside of it. And we can give it a class name equal to MT dash four. Inside of there, we'll have to loop over our top place. So we can do the same thing we used to do before. That's going to be top place question mark dot map. And then we have the song and the index of that song. For each song, we want to render the swiper slide that looks like this. Inside of there, let's give it a few props. We're going to give it a key equal to song question mark dot key. Let's also give it a style equal to width is 25%. And also the height is going to be set to auto. We can also give it a class name equal to shadow dash LG rounded dash full to make it into a circle and animate dash slider right inside of there, we're going to render a link. There we go. And that link is going to point to that's going to be a dynamic template string of forward slash artists forward slash. And then we want to get the song question mark dot artists. And then we want to get the first artist and then dot Adam ID. I'm not really sure what Adam means right there, but I'm guessing it's some sort of an ID. Great. Now inside of that link, we want to render, of course, the artist image. That's going to be a source equal to song question mark dot images, and then dot background. We can also give it an alt tag equal to name and give it a class name equal to rounded dash full w dash full and object dash cover. Great. Now let's save it. And of course, something seems to be breaking, we cannot yet see the images. So if we open up the inspect element, and go to console, nothing will be there. It seems that react does not recognize the slide per view prop on a DOM element. This right here was supposed to be slides per view. So now if we save this and reload the page, we see our top artists. There we go. And we can actually swipe through them. This is going to be great for mobile devices as well. Looking perfect. That's going to be it for our swiper component. And now we have to go back and focus on this, which is going to be the top chart card. Going to the final version, we have to create a layout that looks like this. And again, this widget is really important because it's going to be showing on all the pages. Inside of this div, we can create an H3 tag. That H3 is going to render the index. So we can say I 
but we don't want to start from zero. So we're going to increment one immediately. Now, if we save that, we can barely see it right here. But there it is one to five. And let's give it a class name equal to font dash bold text dash base text dash white and margin right of three. There we go. We can also add a dot afterward. Below that H3, we're going to create a div, which is going to be the wrapper for the rest of our design. There, we can give it a class name equal to flex dash one, flex, flex dash row, justify dash between, and items dash center. Inside of there, we can render our image by opening a self closing image tag giving it a source equal to song question mark dot images question mark dot cover art. We can also give it an alt tag equal to song question mark dot title. Of course, that has to be dynamically rendered. We can also give it a class name equal to w dash 20 h dash 20 and rounded dash LG. Now if we save this, we can see beautiful cover art of the top five songs. Below that image, we're going to create a div. That div is going to have a class name equal to flex one flex flex dash column justify dash center and margin X three. There we want to have two different links. So let's start with the first one link. This link is going to point to it's going to be a dynamic template string forward slash songs forward slash and then song dot key inside of there we can render a p tag that's going to say song question mark dot title and we can also give it a class name equal to text dash xl font dash bold and text dash white now if we save this, you can see the name, we're going to duplicate this link one more time below. This one is going to point to artists. And then to get the key of the artist, that's going to be song dot or rather question mark dot artists zero to get the first one, and then dot Adam ID. Of course, we can change the styles just a bit, we're not going to make it text XL. We're going to make it text dash base, give it the color of text dash gray dash 300 and give it a margin top of one. In this case, it doesn't have to be bolded. And we're going to render the song dot subtitle. Now, if we save this, you can see yours, Jin under the influence, Chris Brown. And if we click on these, we're going to be led to specific pages. For now, those pages are just empty song details page, or we also have the artist details page, we're going to implement those really soon. And finally, the most important thing is the play pause button. Now it's going to be simple to implement that as we have already created it. But of course, we have to pass the proper values to our top chart card component. So alongside the key, the song, the index, Let's provide the is playing is equal to is playing. Let's also pass the active song equal to the active song. And let's pass the handle pause click handle pause click, which we pulled from the song play component. And also let's get the handle play click equal to handle play click. Now we can go back to our top chart card component and we can get all of those props right there. There's going to be the is playing. Also the active song, the handle pause, click, and the handle play, click, great. And we already created that play pause component. So now going below the link, and then below two more divs, we can simply call the play pause component as a self closing tag, and pass a couple of props to it. We're going to pass the is playing, we're going to pass the active song, we're going to pass the song itself, we're going to pass the handle pause 
equal to handle pause click. And we're going to pass the handle play equal to handle play click. And that's going to make these great play and stop buttons work. Now, if we click on this, seems like nothing is happening. Let's expand it a bit. There we go. That's looking great. Let's go back to the discover page and still nothing is happening. Let's open up the console and expand it just a bit. Let's reload the page and let's click play right here. It seems that the song is not defined. So always when something is not working, look into the console. Top play line 55, song is not defined. Right here, it says, we never have the access to the song. That song is actually coming as a parameter to the handle play click and the index is also being passed. So where are we calling that handle play click? Well, we're calling it right below. We have to call it as a callback function and we're going to provide the song as well as the index right here. So once we click on a specific song, we want to know which song do we want to play. Now we can collapse this and click play. As you can see, the song started, which means that now we can play the songs from the top charts as well. We also have those great top artists that's working perfectly. Let's collapse this and open it up in its full glory. There we go. This is looking perfect. We now have the sidebar, we have the discover pop page, we have the top charts as well, and the top artists. And we can play all of the songs that are currently available. You can also see that if we go to I'm um, good, for example, and play it from the sidebar and play it from the widget, it's also going to be showed as playing right here and at the bottom of the page. That's the beauty of using Redux. One single state is shared across three completely different pieces of our user interface, the discover page, the top charts widget, and the music player component. With that said, we can now collapse this one more time. We can close the top play as we're now done with it, the discover as well, and back in the app, we can see exactly where we left off. We have our top charts, top artists, the sidebar, the discover pop. But now if we want to learn more about a specific song, for example, by clicking it right there or by clicking it right here, or if we want to learn more about a specific artist, we cannot do that as the song detail is currently empty. So that might be the next logical step. Let's go ahead and control click into the song details component. To start working on our song details component, we can first import something known as use params coming from react-router-dom. This is a really important import because it's going to give us access to this song ID we have in our URL bar. Let me show you how it works. Let's expand our song details by creating a return statement. There we go. And now at the top of our component, we can say const, we can get the song ID like this and say equal to use params. And now we can console log the song ID. Now, why song ID specifically like this? Why not ID or song or key? Well, if we go back to the app, you can notice a route that has the song details. It goes like this, forward slash songs, forward slash, and then colon song ID. So this is a special key you can specify on your own. In this case, let's leave it as song ID, and that's going to be it. So let's open up the console and let's see if it's there. There we go, 590-865-488 exactly as it is in the URL bar. This will allow us to make another API call to fetch more details about a specific song. So let's start with that right away. Let's focus on getting all the other imports in as well. Imports such as use selector and use dispatch coming from 
react-redux. We also need to import a couple of components such as details header, error, loader, and related songs. And these are coming from dot dot slash components. We also need to get some features from the player slice by saying import set active song as well as play pause. Nothing new. We've already worked with this. And we're going to import this from that's going to be dot dot slash redux forward slash features forward slash player slice. There we go. Now let's initialize our dispatch. So const dispatch is equal to use dispatch. And then we can also pull the data from the state by saying const active song and is playing is equal to use selector. And you know the drill, we get the state and then specifically pinpoint state dot player. And finally, we can focus on the JSX part. So let's create a new return statement, we're going to have one wrapper div inside of it. So let's say div. And let's give it a class name equal to flex and flex dash call. Inside of that div, we're going to have our own component called details header, which is a self closing component, we can pass two different props to it, the artist ID, that's going to be set to artist ID, as well as song data, which is going to be equal to song data. Now, where are we going to get that information? For now, we don't know, we haven't yet fetched the data about a specific song. So let's simply comment this out. For now, we're just creating this structure of our song details component. Soon enough, we're going to fetch real data. Below this details header, we're going to have another div. And that div is going to have a class name equal to margin bottom 10. Inside of there, we're going to have an h2 that's going to simply say lyrics. And it's going to have a class name equal to text dash white text dash three XL, and then font dash bold. Now, if we save this and reload the page, you can notice that something seems to break. So let's go to inspect console. And it seems like components index.js does not provide an export named related songs. Uh, we wanted to look for songs. So if we fix this, we should be good to go. And yes, we are so we can see the top charts, top artists, and then we have the lyrics of this special song. If we look at the finish side, and click on a specific song, you can notice that we have all the details right here. So soon enough, we'll have to focus on pulling the actual song data in. For now, let's finalize this structure right below this h2, we're going to have a div. And that div is going to have a class name equal to empty dash five. Inside of there, we want to loop over the song data. Now, in this case, we will need to have the song data. So now might be a good time to jump into the API and make that request to get the song details by using a specific song ID. So what we can do is go back to our features and services Shazam core. There, we simply need to add another API endpoint. In this case, that's going to be get song details. Again, it's going to look similar builder dot query, we pass in the actual query. And that query is a callback function. And in this case, it will accept a parameter, which is going to be a song ID inside of curly braces. So like this, we want to destructure the song ID, make sure that the I in the ID is lowercase. And then finally, we want to go to forward slash tracks. So that's going to be a dynamic template string, forward slash tracks, forward slash details, question mark, track underscore ID is equal to and then song ID like this. There we go. And as you know, now Redux toolkit automatically generates a new query for us. So that's going to be use get song details query. 
There we go. And we can use that right inside of our song details. So we already learned how to call it. We first need to import it by saying import use get song details query coming from dot dot slash redux forward slash services forward slash shazam core. And we can call it as a hook by saying const data. We can immediately rename it to song data to be more explicit. And we can say is fetching. And we can also rename that to is fetching song details as we're going to fetch multiple things later on. So we want to know what are we fetching. And that's going to be equal to use get song details query. But keep in mind, we have to pass in the song ID inside of an object like this. Well, you can choose to pass the song ID just as a parameter like this, which in this case might make more sense. But then if you go back, you must remove the object from here as well, or rather object destructuring. So you can keep it like this, or you can put an object sign here, and then destructure it here. It is totally up to you. In this case, I'm going to keep it like this object destructuring right there, and also inside of an object right here. Great. So now we're getting real song data. That song data should contain the lyrics to the song. So let's try it out. We can go inside of this div and open up a new dynamic block of code. Let's say song data question mark dot sections. We want to get the first section and then we want to check if the type of that section is equal to lyrics all uppercase. In that case, if it is, then we want to get the song data question mark dot sections one. And then we want to go into the text and then we want to map over each line specifically and get the index. So it's going to look something like this. For each line, we want to return a P tag. And there we're going to render out that line. Now, if we don't have the lyrics, then we're going to go right here. And then we can render a P tag that's going to say something like, sorry, no lyrics found. There we go. But we were supposed to close it right there. So now this should be good. Let's structure it a bit better. So it makes sense. So we are first checking if we do have the lyrics, if we do have them, then map over them and then show the P tag as a line. And then if we don't have it, simply say, sorry, no lyrics found. Now let's add some class names to this P tag. We can do it for the line as well as for the error. Class name is equal to text dash gray dash 400 text dash base and my dash one. Now, as you can see, this song is in Korean, so we can see Korean. But if we move to something like I'm good, there we go. I'm good. Yeah, I'm feeling all right. <laughs> That's good. So now we're getting the lyrics, uh, which is great, which means that we're getting the song data. Now, based on that, we can also call the details header. For now, we won't have the artist ID. So we can simply pass it as empty, but we will have the song data. So now we can move into the details header and focus on that component right away. That component will be a dynamic component. We're going to use it both for the artist detail and the song detail. So therefore, it's going to accept a couple of different props, the artist ID, in case we are on the artist details page, the artist data, same thing, or the song data, if we're on the song details page, which is where we're on right now. And we can also import a link coming from react router dom. There we go. Now we want to show a div and that div will have a class name equal to relative w dash full flex and flex dash call. Inside of there, we want to have one more div, which is going to be just a gradient, it's going to look something like this, you can see this gray rectangle there. So let's create a div as a self closing tag. Let's give it a class name equal to w dash full bg dash gradient dash two l like this from transparent and then two black. 
you can see this is almost like writing in plain English. Tailwind makes it so easy. On small devices, the height is going to be 48, and usually the height is going to be 28. Now, if we save this, you can see this gradient right there. Below that, we can create a new div. That div is going to have a class name equal to absolute inset zero flex and items dash center. Inside of there, we're going to render the image. The image is going to be the self-closing tag, and we can give it an alt tag as art. After that, we can give it the source, which is going to be dynamic. In case we have the artist ID, we want to render the artist data, question mark dot artists, and then we want to dive into the specific artist by saying artist ID, and then dive into its attributes, and then again, dive into its artwork, and then finally get the URL of that artwork. Of course, let's fix this artwork. There we go. That URL is also going to have some properties such as the height and the width of the image. So we have to explicitly rename them right here. So we can say replace braces, W braces. This is going to be for the width. We want to replace that with 500 pixels. And we want to call a replace one more time and replace the braces H and then also 500 because they made it so that the API returns a dynamic image. You can change the numbers to provide a specific height and width, which is exactly what we're doing right here. In case we don't have the artist ID, then we want to render the song data, question mark dot images, question mark dot cover art. There we go. Let's fix this to artist data and save it. And as you can see, we have I'm good by David Guetta. That's great. We can also apply a class name to this image by giving it a small w-48. Usually width is 28. On small devices, height is also 48. And usually height is 28. It's going to be rounded dash full and object dash cover. It's also going to have a border of two and a shadow of extra large. Finally, it's going to have a shadow of black. If we save this, it perfectly goes right here in this gradient rectangle. Now we can also provide a bit more information about the song or the artist. So we can go below this image, still inside of the div, and we can create another div. This div is going to have a class name equal to ML-5 for margin left. Inside of there, we're going to create a P tag where we want to render the artist's name or the song title. So if we do have the artist ID, in that case, we want to go into the artist data, question mark dot artists, we want to tap into that specific artist. So we're going to give it the artist ID. And then we want to go into the attributes. And finally, get the name. As you can notice, these are quite long strings. And this is looking a bit clumsy right inside of our JSX. So what we can do is we can extract that immediately. Let's go ahead and open this up. So we're going to provide it as a return statement and create a normal function block. There we go. This is looking better already. Let's comment out this P tag for now. And now at the top, we can say const, and now we can destructure those values at the top. And you can also notice it's being repeated down there as well. So two times, and this is repetitive. It's just a lot of data and something can easily go wrong. So rather, let's simply say const artist data is equal to artist data question mark dot artists artist ID dot attributes or rather question mark dot attributes. And then in this case, we're calling for artwork, but below we want to call for name. So that's fine. We can leave it up to here. And now finally, we'll have to rename it as artist data is already here. So let's do something like artist. There we go. And now instead of doing all this long string, we can replace the artist data dot artists, artist ID attributes with simply artist. So now we're calling artist dot artwork 
and down below as well, we're going to simply do artist.name. This makes much more sense, right? Now, if we don't have the artist ID, means we want to have the song title. So we can say song data, question mark dot title. Now, if we save this, you can notice that it's dark, but I'm good. And we can add a class name to this B tag. That's going to be font dash bold. On small devices, text dash 3XL, usually text dash XL and text dash white. If we save that, you can see this is looking much better. Below that P tag, we want to show something that's only going to happen if we're on the song details page and not on the artist details page. So we can say if no artist ID and end, meaning render this code. We want to render a link and that link is going to have a P tag that's going to render the song data question mark dot subtitle like this. Let's apply some class names such as class name is equal to text dash base, text dash gray dash 400 and margin top two. There we go. So now we can see the title and also the subtitle, which in this case are the authors of the song. We can also specify a two property to this link, which is going to be a dynamic link to forward slash artists, forward slash dollar sign curly braces, song data, question mark dot artists zero dot Adam ID. Great. So now if we save this and click here, it's going to lead us to the artist details page. Isn't that great? Finally, we can render the genre of the song or the genre of that artist. We can do that right below this dynamic block of code by rendering a P tag. That P tag is going to have the same class name as the above one. So we can copy it and we're going to make it dynamic. So inside of that P tag, we again want to check if the artist ID is there. If it does exist, then we want to get into the artist, which is our variable we created at the top and then want to say question mark dot genre names and then zero. So we want to know which genres is that artist playing. Otherwise we can get the song data question mark dot genres, question mark dot primary. If you're wondering why are we using question mark dot, that means that we want to make sure that this data actually exists. In case it doesn't, JavaScript would give us an error. But if we put a question mark, it's going to give us undefined, which is of course better than an error. Great. So now we can see that this is dance. That's great. Let's try with a couple of other songs. So if I click right there under the influence, Chris Brown, R&B or soul. Great. And we also get the lyrics. And finally, we can finish it with one self closing div. We can go below this div and below one other div right here and create a self closing div with a class name equal to W dash full on small devices, H dash 44, and then usually H dash 24. If we save this, that's going to give it some space. Finally, we can go back to the song details page. Now, if we expand this to its full glory, as you can see, we have a beautiful song details page with lyrics and more information about that specific song. But what we can also do as it is on the finished version, we're going to add related songs. There's one cool thing I want you to notice. Can you see it? The songs in the related songs are using the same component as the songs in the top charts. Again, we are reusing different parts of the user interface. With that said, let's finalize our song details page by providing those related songs. To do that, we can go right here below those two divs inside of the song details component, and we can call the related songs self closing component. Now, what props do we have to pass? Now, to be able to pass those props, there is one more API call that we have to make, and that is to get the artist details of this specific song. So if we are on the song details page, we want to know more about Chris Brown, because that's going to allow us to show some more Chris Brown songs. So let's go back to the Shazam core and let's add one more API endpoint. 
the new API endpoint will be called get song related. Essentially getting the related songs. We can again do the same thing. Builder.query, we pass an object, specify the query as the callback function that looks like this. And in this case, we will also be getting the song ID as the first and only parameter. Then we want to call the forward slash tracks forward slash related and then question mark track underscore ID is equal to song ID. There we go. I think now you can see the power of creating a proper Redux toolkit structure. It's so easy to add new API endpoints. And we again duplicate this and get the new get songs related query. Great. We can now go back in our song details component and we can call it right at the top. It's going to look something like this. Const, we want to get the data. We want to get the is fetching, which we can rename to is fetching related songs. And we also can get the error. And that's going to be equal to use get song related query. And we're going to pass in the song ID inside of an object. We of course also have to import use get song related query from services Shazam core. Now that we have all of the is fetching properties and all the data, we can create proper loading and error handlers. We can say if is fetching song details or is fetching related songs, then return a loader component. That loader will have a title that says searching song details. There we go. We can also say if error, simply return our self-closing error component. Great. And now we have all of the states that we can pass to our related songs component. We need the data equal to data. The is playing property equal to is playing. We're going to also have the active song equal to active song. And then we again need those handle pause click and handle play click, which we can get from the song component. So let's go into the song card and let's simply grab those two functions. We can paste them somewhere near the top right here, handle pause click and handle play click. Let's add them here. Handle pause click is equal to handle pause click and also handle play click is equal to handle play click. And of course we have to get the song and the index as the first two parameters to handle play click. Great. Now we can finally go into the related songs and start focusing on how to render them. Inside of here, we can import a component called song bar. So that's going to be import song bar coming from dot slash song bar. And this component is incredibly similar to the top charts component, but there are some minor differences though. If you look at the finished version, you can see the top charts. You can see if we hover over it, it highlights and you can see how the song bar component looks like. It seems identical, but there are a couple of differences. For example, here we can also get albums, not only songs. So it is important that we handle that properly. Now we can go into the song bar component and for you, there's already going to be the code for a pre-populated song bar component. It's going to look like this. Again, the only reason why I provided this file as it's incredibly similar to the one we've created before, which looks exactly the same. Great. With that said, we can continue with our related songs. Now inside of the props, we're getting all of the props that we passed. So you can hold the alt key and then keep copying those different props. And then we can paste them right here. If we destructure the props. Now let's put everything properly in one line divided by commas. There we go. So for now we're getting the data, the is playing property, the active song, handle pause click as well as handle play click. Inside of there, we can render a div and that div is going to have a class name equal to flex and flex dash call. 
Inside of there, we can also render an H1 that's going to say related songs like this. We can also give that H1 a class name of font-bold, text-3xl, and text-white. If we save that and scroll down, you can see, not here, this is the finished version, but if we go here, you can see the loader, which doesn't seem to be right. Let's save it, reload the page. We seem to have one issue, so let's open up Inspect, go to the console, and it looks like song bar doesn't exist. Rather, it should be coming from, let's check it out, song bar, export default song bar. Yep, it's going to be a default import. So it's going to look like this without curly braces. Once we fix that and reload the page, we're back and now we can see related songs. Great. Inside of here, we can open up a new div. It's going to have a class name equal to mt-6 w-full flex and flex-call. And inside of there, we can map over the data. So that's going to be data question mark dot map. We get each individual song and the index of that song. And we want to return a song bar component for each song. To that song bar component, we can provide a key because we're mapping over it. So let's make the key equal to song dot key. Now, later on, if we go to a specific artist like Jin right there, we're going to also have related songs for that artist. So it's important to think about that because data is not always going to be just a song. Sometimes it's going to be about artists. So sometimes we're not going to have the song key. So what we can do is either provide the song key or provide the artist ID, which will be coming through props. There we go. So now we're doing it in the proper way. Now we can go back and we can also provide the song property. Song is equal to song. The index is equal to index as well. We can provide the artist ID equal to artist ID, the is playing property, the active song property, and finally the handle pause click as well as the handle play click. There we go. So now we are rendering the song bar component for every single songs. And now we have the related songs listed right here. We're done with the related songs. We can exit out of them. We can exit out of the song bar. The song details are now done as well. And we're back into the app. So now let's expand this and let's look into it in its full glory. We have under the influence right there. It's a song title, the artist title, as well as the genre. We have the lyrics right here. And then we have a list of related songs. And now we can switch between different songs just by clicking on them. Great. Now the next step is going to be to implement the artist details page. So let's collapse our browser. And let's open up the new page, which is going to be the artist details. It's going to be quite similar to the song details component, because a lot of different elements are exactly the same. So we can start by going back to the app, going to the song details and copying the entire page. Let's copy it and paste it into the artist details. We can of course change the name of the component from the song details to artist details here in the name, as well as in the export. And now let's look into the differences that we have to make to make this component work. Regarding imports, we're going to have use params, use selector. We won't be needing the use dispatch. We're going to get the details header, error, loader, and related songs. In this case, we won't be playing any songs, so we don't need to get the set active and play pause. And we won't be using the get song details or get related songs. We'll be using something known as get artist details. So that's a new endpoint that we are yet to create. For now, we can save this file as it is and go back to our API. So that's going to be inside of Redux and Shazam core. There we can add that new endpoint. The endpoint is going to be called get artist details. It's going to be the same as always builder.query. We provide the query 
And in this case, we're going to provide the artist ID, which is going to be again, a callback function. We're going to get the artist ID as the first and only parameter. And we're going to go to forward slash artists, forward slash details, question mark artist underscore ID is equal to artist ID. In this case, you won't need to destructure the parameter as we did with the song ID, because we're going to pass it in automatically. Great. Now we can also export our query hook, use get artist details query. Great. Let's go back and let's import it right here. Use get artist details query. Moving down, we won't be needing the dispatch. We're not getting the song ID, rather we're getting the ID, which we can rename to artist ID. That's coming from params. As you can see, we're under artists and then a specific key, which denotes that specific artist. Then we're going to keep the active song and is playing, but we won't need those two calls. We'll need just one. That's going to be the call to the use get artist details query. So we can put it there and we can pass the artist ID as the first and only parameter. We're not getting back the song data. We are getting back the artist data and under is fetching, we can say is fetching artist details. And finally, we're getting the error as well. Great. Now we won't be needing the handle pause click and handle play click here. So we can remove that. We are not fetching song details or related songs. We are fetching the artist details. So is fetching artist details. And we can say loading artist details. And under error, we can simply render the error. Now for the details header, we can provide the artist ID this time, because now we have it. And we can also provide the artist data. So artist data is equal to artist data. Great. We can expand it so we can see it better. In this case, we're not rendering the lyrics. So we can remove this part. And the last thing we can do is provide proper props to our related songs. In this case, the data for the songs is going to look like this object dot values, artist data, question mark dot songs. So we simply want to format our songs in a proper way so that we can render the songs from that specific artist. And we're going to also pass the artist ID because now we have it and we don't have to pass those two handlers. Great. That's going to be it for the artist detail component. Let's check it out. I'm going to reload the page and let's try to go to, let's do Rema. If we click it, of course it breaks. So let's open up the inspect element, check the console. And it says, cannot convert undefined or null to object at artist details 24. So that seems to be here object.values, artist data, question mark dot, it's not going to be song, it's going to be songs, plural. So if we save that, there we go. It automatically loads, let's expand it. And would you look at that, we have a great list of songs from this specific artist. This is looking great. We also can go to song details. That's looking great as well to artist details. Again, everything is perfect. We can go back to the discover page. We haven't checked it out in a long time. And with that, we can now go to the artist or song details for every single one of these songs inside of the discover page. Let's try to check this one out. There we go. And we can see the lyrics as well. Now the next step is going to be to implement the around you top artists and top charts. First one on the list is around you. So what we can do is collapse this one more time, close all of the currently open files besides the app and open up the around you page. Rather, it's called country tracks right here. To start creating our around you page, we can first import the use state as well as use effect hooks coming from react. There we go. 
and we can also import Axios coming from Axios. We finally need just one more import, which is going to be the use selector import coming from React Redux. We also have a couple of components we have already created and used, and those are the error component, of course, with a capital E, the loader component, and the song card component coming from da dot slash components. Now inside of our country tracks, or we can rename this to around you, we are going to have a div that's going to be inside of a return statement. So let's fix this properly. And let's wrap everything in a regular function block. There, we're going to create a state, a use state field. We're going to call it country and set country. And at the start, it's going to be set to an empty string. We're going to also create a loading state. So use state snippet and let's call it loading. Set loading and at the start, it's going to be set to true. We also want to get the active song and is playing. And as you already know, we can say active song and is playing. And we're going to fetch that by saying equal to use selector state and then state dot player. Now to be able to fetch the songs around us, we have to know where we are, right? So let's create a use effect hook, which is going to be ran once a user visits this page. And we're going to recall it whenever the country changes. Inside of there, we want to make an API call to the geo Ipify API, you can visit the geo.ipify.org API. To give it a try, click the give it a try button. There you'll have to register your account. And once you register, you can go to API docs. Here, it's going to give you your API key, you can see how to make a request. But to get the actual key, go to the my subscriptions page. There you can create your new subscription, you're going to have a limit of 1000 requests. So you have your ID right there. And your personal API key is here. And that's what we need. So copy it. And let's go back to the code. There we go. Now you can paste it right here in a comment. And let's go back to the API docs page. There you have the instructions on which API endpoint you have to call. So let's copy that as well. And let's say, axios.get, we're going to make it dynamic, paste this URL. And in here, it actually auto filled the URL for you. So that's going to be good. We don't even need it. So that's going to be geo.ipify.org API, you can use v1 or v2, whichever version is fine. And in this case, I don't think we're going to need this IP address. So we can remove that. Great. Now we're going to chain a dot then on it. And we're going to get a response. There we want to set the country to be equal to res question mark dot data question mark dot location, and then question mark dot country. If there's an error, we can say dot catch, we can pass in the console log error. And then we have a dot finally method, where we're going to set the loading to false. So if it's successful, or if there's an error, we want to set the loading to false. Great. Now, finally, let's console log the country to see if this is working. I'm going to save it, go back to our app, and open up the inspect element. Let's go to console and let's reload the page. Nothing is happening. But that's because we are not on the around you page. So let's go back to desktop. Let's open it up just a bit more and let's go to around you. And there we go, we get HR, which is the shortened name for Croatia. And it is true. In my case, you should see something different. But this means that it's working. So now we can use that country to fetch the songs that are popular around us. To do that, we can go back to our Shazam core and create one additional endpoint. That's going to be get songs by country. It's going to be builder dot query, we're going to pass a query again. And we're going to have a function. 
that function is going to render a string. But inside of there as the first parameter, we're going to get the country code. Finally, we want to go to forward slash charts forward slash country question mark country underscore code is equal to country code. Great. Now we can export the hook for that call. Use get songs by country. We can go back to around you and we can import it. Let's do that by importing the use get songs by country query coming from Redux services Shazam core. And you know the drill. We can say const get the data, get the is fetching, as well as get the error. And that's equal to to the call of the use get songs by country query. And we're going to pass in the country as the first and only parameter. Great. Now, based on the info we receive, we can say if is fetching and and loading. In that case, we can return a loader component with a title saying loading songs around you. Great. And then if there's an error, so if error and and if country. So if country exists, if it's not an empty string, in that case, we want to return the error. There we go. And finally, now we're getting the data containing the songs that are playing around us. Let's create the structure of our component. We can do that by creating a div. This div is going to have a class name equal to flex and flex dash column. We're going to render an H2. And that H2 is going to say around you. Let's give it a class name equal to font dash bold text dash three XL text dash white text dash left margin top four margin bottom 10. If we save this, we can see around you. Now we want to create another div, which is going to be the wrapper for the actual songs. So we can say class name is equal to flex flex dash wrap on small devices, justify dash start usually justify dash center and gap dash eight. And now you might be wondering, how are we actually going to map over those songs? Well, it's going to be incredibly simple, because we have already created the song card component. So the only thing we have to do is get the data, question mark dot map, get the song, get the index, and for each song, return a song card component. Of course, we have to give it a key equal to song that key. We have to provide the actual song info by saying song is equal to song. The is playing is equal to is playing the active song equal to active song. We're going to pass the entire data as well as the index and we can save it. As soon as we do that, we can see songs that are popular right here in my country. We can also add that short country code by saying around you. And then we can add a span inside of that H2. So first we have around you. And then we can add a span. That span is going to have a class name that's going to be equal to font dash black. And we can render the country. There we go. If we save that, we see around you HR, which is short for Croatia. And we can add a space after around you like this. There we go. So for you, it should be your country code. And this is looking great. Now we have the songs playing in your country, as well as the most popular songs. Great. Next, we can focus on the top charts. And then finally, we're going to focus on the top artists. So let's go to the top charts by going back, opening the app and going to the top charts. Believe it or not, top charts are going to be almost exactly the same as songs around you. And that's for a reason. We created this structure where we can now reuse different pieces of the user interface. So let's go back to around you. Let's copy the entire file and paste it into the top charts. We can rename the export and the component to top charts. 
and now we'll have to remove some of the things because the top charts is even simpler. We won't be needing the states. Instead of the use get songs by country query, we're gonna get the use top charts query, or rather it's use get top charts query. We won't need those states, and we can rename this to use get top charts query, and we don't have to pass the country. Finally, we can remove the use effect. We can say if is fetching return loader, and we can say loading top charts. And again, if there's an error, we're gonna return the error. In this case, we won't say around you, we're gonna say discover top charts, and we don't need this pad right there. And that's going to be it. Let's save it. And as you can see, we get top charts right here. So now we have around you, and we also have top charts. Later on, we're gonna change the discover so we can actually choose the genres. But you just saw how simple this was. And it was simple because we were using Redux Toolkit that allowed us to make those simple calls. And we were writing proper reusable React code. Great. The next component is going to be the top artists. And for that, we can copy the top charts, go to the app, and then go to the top artists. Where is it? There we go top artists. Let's paste it. Rename the top charts to top artists. We won't be needing the use selector, but we will need the artist card, which is a new component we haven't used yet. We will need the loader and the error. And we're going to use the same get top charts query. We can remove the use selector. We're going to keep the is fetching and the error. We're not gonna say discover top charts, rather we're gonna say top artists. And finally, we won't use the song card, rather we're gonna use the artist card. So right here, we can say artist card, and we're gonna pass two different things to it. This will no longer be a song, it's gonna be a track, and we can pass the key equal to track.key, and also we're gonna pass the entire track to it. There we go. So now if we go back and if we expand it just a bit and click top artists, you can notice that nothing's there. And that's because our artist card is currently empty. So to implement the artist card, we're gonna import something known as use navigate coming from React Router DOM. As props, we're getting the track property. And there we can initialize the navigate. So we can say const navigate is equal to use navigate. This is a React Router DOM hook that allows us to move to different pages. There we're going to create a div inside of a return. That div is going to have a class name equal to flex, flex dash call w-250 pixels, p-4, bg-white over 5, bg-opacity-80, backdrop-blur-small, animate-slide up, rounded-lg, and cursor-pointer. Inside of there, we're going to render an image. So a self-closing image tag that's going to have an alt equal to artist and a source equal to track question mark dot images question mark dot cover art. While we're here, we can also give it a class name equal to w dash full h dash 56 and the rounded dash lg. Now if we save that, you can see different artist images appear right here. Now, these are the album images of these artists, but that's also fine because if you're following a specific artist, you're going to know that they released a new album recently. And in most of the cover arts, it's actually going to be themselves on the album cover. Great. So now we're going to also render the P tag below the image. And there we want to render the track question mark dot subtitle. There we go. So we can see the actual name of the artist. 
and let's give it a class name, MT-4, font-semi-bold, text-lg, text-white, and truncate. If we save that, now it's looking so much better. We can see the artists right there. Finally, if we click on the artist, nothing is gonna happen. So inside of this div, we need to give it an on-click property and provide it a callback function. Once somebody clicks it, we want to navigate to forward slash artists, forward slash track question mark dot artists zero dot Adam ID. Now, if we save this and click on an artist, you can see it leads us to dot artists details page. This is great. Now, if we expand this one more time, we have successfully implemented the discover page, the around you page, the top artist page, and the top charts page. This is looking great. Now, of course, there's still a couple of things we can focus on. Now that we have the top charts and top artists, we can make those see more buttons on the top charts and top artists widget work. The top artists one already works, but let's check for the top charts. That's going to be in the top play component. And let's see where it is. Pointing to top charts, that should be working already. And it does. So we already made that work beforehand. Now, another thing we can focus on is removing this ugly white line at the bottom. And we can do that by starting to implement the search bar component. So let's collapse our browser and let's go to our search. There we go. Currently it is empty, but we don't want to focus on the search page yet. We want to focus on the search bar component, which is this one. There, for now, we can implement just the UI to remove that ugly white line. We can do that by returning a form, in this case. That form is going to have the autocomplete set to off. It's also going to have a class name equal to p-2, text-gray-400. When we focus dash within, then we want to have a text-gray-600. Inside of there, we want to return a label component. That label is going to be the HTML for search dash field. And it's going to have a class name of SR dash only. In there, we want to say search all songs. Below that label, we want to have a div and that div is going to have a class name equal to flex, flex dash row, justify dash start and items dash center. Inside of there, we can render a search icon, which we can import. So let's import at the top. That's going to be use state, which we're going to use later on from react. We also want to import the use navigate hook coming from react router Dom. And finally, we can import the FI search icon coming from react-icons forward slash fi. Great. Now we can render it right here inside of this div by showcasing a self-closing fi search icon that's going to have a class name of w-5, h-5, and margin left of 4. Finally, below the search, we're going to have an input, the most important part of the search that's going to have a name equal to search dash field. It's going to have autocomplete set to off. The C right there has to be capitalized as above. It's also going to have an ID equal to search field. It's going to have a placeholder of search. The type is going to be set to search as well. The value is going to be set to an empty string for now. And the on change is going to be set to an empty callback function, at least for now. Now, if we save this, you can see we have a really ugly search at the top, but let's give it some class names. So we can say class name is equal to flex-1 bg-transparent 
border dash none, outline dash none, placeholder dash gray dash 500, text dash base, and text dash white. And finally, P dash four for padding. If we save this, now we have a beautiful search on top. Now, if we expand our browser, would you look at that? We have a proper search at the top. We have the genre selector, top charts around you, top artists, and so much more. What do you think we can focus on next? I think that a reasonable next step is to fetch different genres. So we've been looking at the top charts for a long time now, but now let's be able to fetch pop, hip hop, dance, electronic, K-pop, and so much more. To do that, we can go back. Let's close all of the currently open files and let's open up the app. From within the app, we can go into the discover page where we can actually select those genres. And then in here, we'll add the functionality to send the right genre to our query and then to fetch the right songs. So let's do that right away. To make the genres functionality work, we have to make use of our select. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the dispatch functionality. Remember, we use select when we want to select a piece of state, but we use dispatch when we want to modify the state. In this case, we want to dispatch an action to the store that's going to say, hey, we want to get this specific genre. And then with a selector, we'll be able to fetch that modified state. Great. Now let's do just that by adding the dispatch to the on change. So the select has the event and we can dispatch an action called select genre list ID. And this is coming from the player slice. So we can get it at the top. We can say import select genre list ID. And that's coming from dot dot slash redux forward slash features forward slash player slice. And now we can dispatch that, call it as a function and pass the event dot target dot value to it. We also need to modify the value and that's going to be genre list ID or pop at the start. Now that genre list ID is coming from the state so we can get it right here, genre list ID. There we go. Now we can scroll to the top and then we can change this. We can dispatch an action to hip hop. As you can see, nothing really happens. That's because we're not passing the updated changes to the use get something. Right now we're getting just the top charts and the genre title is always pop. So what we have to do is call a new endpoint from the API. You know the drill. Let's go inside of Redux, inside of services, and then into the Shazam core. In here, we're gonna add a new endpoint right at the top below the get top charts, and let's call it get songs by genre. That's going to be builder.query. We pass in the query. That's going to be a callback function where we get the genre, and then we call forward slash charts, and then genre dash world question mark genre underscore code is equal to genre like this. And of course we can export it right here. Use get songs by genre query. There we go. We can go back. We can now import it right here. Use get songs by genre query. And we can call it instead of calling the use get top charts query. But now we have to pass something to it. So we are going to pass the genre list ID, or we're going to pass pop all caps. Now, if we save that, you can see we get pop songs. And if we switch that to hip hop, you can see the songs actually switch. So that is working, but it still says pop right here. So let's modify that. We can move this genre title a couple of lines below and let's make it dynamic. We can say genres 
dot find, we can destructure the value, which is the genre ID. And then we can check if the value is triple equal to the genre list ID. And we get the title once we find the one that matches. Now, if we save that, discover hip hop, let's expand this, and it's gonna look great. Hip hop, dance, electronic, and we also have the loading states. Notice how if we go for new songs or new genres, there's a loading. But now if we go back, it loads instantaneously. That's the power of Redux Toolkit. It saves the genres in cache, so it simply pulls them right back. Beautiful. Now our Discover, Around You, Top Artists, Top Charts pages are all done. Our main view is done. Our widgets are done as well. Our music player is also fully functional and we can switch between the songs, change the volume, make it shuffle, make it repeat, and scrub through the playlist. This is looking great. The last thing we can focus on is gonna be the search page. So now the search is not functional, we cannot type anything in it. So let's focus on that next by going back to our code and then going to the search bar component. There we go. Inside of here, we can make this a normal function block. So let's return this right there. There we go. And we can initialize the use navigate hook. So const navigate is going to be equal to the use navigate hook call. We can also create a new state by saying use state. We're going to call it search term, set search term. And at the start, it's going to be set to an empty string. And finally, we're going to create a handle submit function, which is going to take in an event. We have to call the event dot prevent default as the default browser behavior is to reload the page once we submit a form. In React, you never want to do that. So this is going to be a common occurrence. And then once we handle the submit, we want to navigate to the forward slash search forward slash search term like this. And we have to call that handle submit as the on submit inside of the form. Of course, we have to modify the search term. So what we can do is change the value of the input to search term. And then on change, we can say set search term to be equal to e dot target dot value. Of course, that e is coming from here being event. Great. Our search bar component is now done. We can now actually type into it. And now once you type something like test, it will lead you to a special page forward slash search forward slash test. And now you can see that is the search page that you can see right there. Currently, of course, it is completely empty. So let's go into the search component, or rather should I say the search page, and let's start implementing the UI. Once again, this component is going to be quite similar to a page we've used before. That's going to be, let's check it out, the top charts page. So let's simply copy the entire top charts, go back into the search page, and let's paste it right there. Rename the top charts export and component name to search. And let's check if we have to get something more from the imports. Top charts doesn't care about the URL, but our search does because it has to get the search value from here. So we can import the use params hook coming from react router DOM. In this case, we won't be using the use get top charts. Rather, we'll have to go back to services, Shazam core, and we'll have to implement our search endpoint. That's going to be a new endpoint, which we can call get songs by search. I think you can notice the pattern. That's going to be builder.query. We specify a query. We're going to get a search term as the first and only parameter. And we want to go to forward slash. And then it's going to not be search, it's going to be forward slash multi as we can search for multiple terms. And then it's going to be question mark. And we're going to have a search underscore type, which is going to be equal to 
songs underscore artists. So whatever you search, it's going to come up. And then finally, you can say and, and provide a query equal to the search term. So it's going to look like this. Now we can export that as a hook. So that's going to be use get songs by search query. We can go back to the search, get it right here. Use get songs by search query. And then we have to get the search term from the URL by saying const search term is equal to use params provided to us by react router DOM. Finally, we can pass the search term as the one and only parameter to the use get songs by search query. Now we're going to get both the songs and the artists in this search. But what we can do to improve that is simply say const songs is equal to data question mark dot tracks question mark dot hits question mark dot map. We're going to get a song and we want to return a song dot track for each song. So now we're going to use this as the list of our songs. And down below, we can change this from discover top charts to showing results for we can add a span element, we can give it a class name equal to font dash black. And we can say search term inside of there. And we're not going to map over the data, we're going to map over the songs. Finally, let's save it. Let's expand it. And let's search for something like one republic. We get something went wrong, which is entirely fine. Let's go check our API endpoint. And we want to search for get songs by search. And I missed one thing. It's not going to be just forward slash multi, it's going to be forward slash search forward slash multi as a multi search. So now it works, we can see different album covers, different single covers, everything from one republic. Let's search for a couple of other artists. Let's do BTS. That works as well. Some beautiful cover art here. Let's do Doja Cat as well. There we go. So all search results are appearing right here. Beautiful. With that said, it seems like we are entirely done with our phenomenal music exploration and music player application called Lyrics. Let's quickly check the mobile responsiveness to see if we're good to go. And it seems that we are. There we go. You can scroll, it seems like a native mobile application. And if you try to play it, the music player shows in a mobile mode. So you can use your thumb to quickly switch between the songs. Beautiful. That means that we are good to go. As you know, on JavaScript mastery, I always take you a step further and show you how to deploy this application to the web. So you can share it with your friends, potential employers, and showcase it on your portfolio. So the next step is deployment. To deploy our great application, we'll be using Netlify. It's a great platform to simply and quickly deploy your React apps. So let's sign up or log in. Once you do, that's going to bring you to your dashboard, go to sites, and then drag it to the right side of your Visual Studio code. Go to view, terminal, stop it from running, clear it, and run npm run build. On Vite, this process is incredibly quick and it takes just a couple of seconds. Let's see if it's going to be finished. I was about to say while I finished my sentence, but yeah, it did it while I was starting it. Now we can go to Explorer, right click the disk, reveal in File Explorer or open in Finder if you're on Mac and simply drag and drop the disk folder right here. It's currently uploading. Sometimes it's going to give you this error, but simply reload the page. And you can see your application is going to be right here. We can also go to the main settings and change our site name to something like JSM lyrics app. And let's save it. Finally, you can click right here and check your app 
right on the internet. We have the Discover, Around You, Top Artists, Top Charts, Search, and more. It is a fully functional music player application. Not just music player, music exploration, as you can search for your new favorite artists, top charts, or discover some new genres you haven't listened to before. Great, I'm incredibly happy about this build, and I hope you liked it as well. Once again, it wasn't me that created the app. It was the students of the JSM Masterclass experience. Three of them created this application in their first month of joining us. The JSM Masterclass experience will provide you with the interview prep needed to nail those interviews, exclusive educational materials, recorded mock interviews, reviews of your portfolio, CV, LinkedIn, and GitHub, and most importantly, those monthly group projects we talked about. Throughout those projects, you're going to learn how to build projects just as this one we've built today, but with the help of mentors. That means that you will be able to demonstrate advanced knowledge and expertise in coding applications, showcase competency in problem solving, understand what makes a project successful and how that correlates to achieving company goals, provide freelance clients with the confidence that projects will be delivered efficiently and on schedule and speak authoritatively about programming and display excellence and humility in what you've learned. So right now, all of the cohorts are full. So unfortunately, you cannot join right now. But if you're interested in joining in one of the future cohorts, where mentors will help you build your own projects just as the one we've built today in this video, then make sure to go to the description and enter your name and email in the form below. That's going to allow us to reach out to you before the next cohort starts. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video and building this application with me today. It's been phenomenal having you, and I really appreciate it. I really do mean that. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications if you like the video. That's going to be it for this one, and have a wonderful day.